I'm going to begin by stating up front that this video is going to be stylistically very different from the other videos on my channel. Typically on this channel, you'll expect to see me present commentaries where I select a topic, usually an individual, and then present an argument backed by evidence in a form of infotainment, usually involving a lot of ranting, jokes at the expense of the individual that I've chosen to make the video on, as well as information that I've been able to dig up on the subject itself. Simply put, that is not what this video is. If you are expecting me to antagonize the subject of this video, if you are expecting me to debate their views, try to prove them wrong, and find gotchas, this is not the video for you, there are plenty other ones like it on the channel, and I would recommend any one of those. However, this is more of an interview style video. The motivation for this video is that my curiosity was piqued over several different things that I had seen unfolding on Twitter, as well as on YouTube through other videos about this person. I decided to reach out and attempt to interview them, and they agreed. I'm not going to provide my input on much of this, and I attempted to limit that input as much as possible in the interview itself, because ultimately, this video is only to present information. It's not to give you my opinion, it's not to give you my take. All I can do is show you the information in its raw, unedited form, except where it is noted in the recording itself, where it was edited, and you are allowed to form whatever opinion you want to from there. The only input that I'm going to give right now is a formal warning, which is that this video, the conversation goes to some fairly dark places. If you don't think you have the stomach for that, I highly recommend clicking off of this video. But for those of you who can handle that, we're going to continue on with the interview right now. Here. All right, this is a recorded interview um, with, and do you want to state your name very quickly? Sure, White Kitten. All right, this is a recorded interview between myself, Coyote Lovely, and White Kitten, um, and I'm just making this very, very clear. This is recorded. We both are aware this is being recorded. We have both agreed to this interview. Um, also, and this is also just to clarify everything for everyone watching, we both are aware that this is going to be uploaded to uh, my YouTube channel, you know, after the fact, and this has no particular agenda attached to it other than asking questions that I am curious about. Um, there's not going to be an argument here. This isn't intended to put anyone on blast for anything. Uh, so, uh, just making sure everyone's on the same page and everyone watching <laughs> at a later date, everyone knows what's going on. Yeah, that all sounds good. All right, so I have a list of about 10 questions, and I'm going to, you know, refrain from putting my own personal input in this. I'm just going to need to essentially ask the questions, and you answer them as honestly as you want to. Or if a question makes you uncomfortable as well, you feel free to let me know. Um, I will not remove the question I've asked from the recording. I'm not cutting anything out. Um, but I, it, it, essentially, you don't have to answer anything you're, you yeah, don't really want to. that's fine. Okay. So question one is, you know, we're going to go through a basic who, what, when, where, why, which is the first few questions. Um, so question one is, as a furry, who are you in the fandom? Are you an artist, a writer? Uh, what is it that you mostly, what role do you mostly fulfill within the fandom in, uh, in your own words? Yeah, I mean, I mostly commission stuff. I used to go to conventions and things like that, but I just don't have the time and the... Um... I just, when the internet became bigger, like, so, I used to go to conventions pretty regularly, but then the internet, it became much easier to connect with people uh, online, and so I don't really feel that need to, like, go out and see um, people that I've been talking to online in person, because it's it's easy to voice call or, you know, to, to meet up with them that way. Uh, other than that, I mostly just uh commission art and uh i don't think i have any involvement in the fandom besides that all right all right um so that's i guess we can move on to question number two um which is i suppose what prompted the creation of the series womb because that was the series that i was first introduced to um actually through benji's video i i honestly didn't know a lot about a lot of this and that one has there's a lot of morbid curiosity from that one on my end, just so you understand where I'm coming from with that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I think it would be informative for me to give you a little bit of an understanding of... That's like part 
of a larger universe that I don't have a name for or anything like that. Generally, I've had people call it like the White Kitten universe or White Kitten verse or WK verse, something like that. And uh, Womb is just an organization in that universe. Uh, and um, so you're curious why I commissioned it or yeah, what did I you want to know about it exactly? I, I suppose just. What prompted it as a, the creation of the universe in general? What what brought about, what inspired that, I suppose, is the best sure. question. What inspired yeah. that universe, and where did that all sort of come from? What was the what was the lightning in a bottle moment, I suppose, is the, is the not lightning in a bottle moment, I guess, um, more of the spark yeah, of inspiration where it came from. Yep, okay, I think I have a better understanding of what you're looking for. So I guess I would kind of go back to, I got involved in... Like, when I was younger, like, very young, I watched, um, God, what's that movie called? Little Shop of Horrors 2. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Have you seen it at all, or? I've seen the first one, I believe. I didn't know there was a sequel. Is there a se- um, Oh, it's just Little Shop of Horrors. The the character's Audrey 2 is the, right. I believe, the plant. Okay. So yeah, there's a there's a war sequence in that where a woman gets eaten by a plant, and the, I when I was very young, I found that arousing. It wasn't something I was looking for in particular, but I just was super into it. Um, and uh, I kind of branched out from that into like getting interested in devour as a fetish, just as you know, sort of an extension. And it took me a long time to realize, but. Um, I wasn't really interested in Vor. I was kind of more interested in like the the um, the best way to describe it is like the possession of another person. It's it's a really intense form of uh, wanting somebody so badly that you want to like destroy them so that nobody else can have them. Like you want to violate them in a way where like they they're all used up and there's nothing left. And um, th- by extension, that kind of came. So, so that got me sort of out of Vor as a primary driver because I, I realized what I was really interested in. And so I sort of had these um, dehumanization and I guess you could call it like total usage. I'm not sure. There's not a great name for what I think what I'm into. Um, and so I got into that. And then I do a lot of role playing on the side, um, like text based, generally. All right. No, and, I, I understand uh, what you're talking about with uh, text based role play. It's sort of on Discord yep. and chat rooms, things like that. Places like Echo's Portal as well. Back when that was in its heyday. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is a yep. That's one. There's a, a tapestries muck. If you have any listeners that are interested in learning more about erotic role playing. Um, there's a lot of different places to go. I think Fless is probably the most accessible right now from uh, my role playing. <laughs> I am very familiar. I'm very familiar with Fless. I I don't have one myself, but a lot of the people that I tend to talk about have them. So I'm very familiar. Yeah, it's a great system for sharing what your likes are and to really get down to the nitty gritty. And I have to like re-explain that to everyone. But uh, I I I got into the you know sort of uh, erotic role playing online and text. And, um, you know, I engaged in the, the dehumanization fetish stuff and the, the actual acronym WOM, the Women's Obedience and Maturation Bureau came from that. So it's actually sort of a universe that I built with somebody else. There's a character, Belia, I think is how you say it, B-L-I-A. I actually don't know what the pronunciation is if I'm getting it right. But, uh, she was another role player that, uh, we came up with the universe sort of together uh, in sort of a collaborative um, constructionist way. So, like, imagine if you're playing D&D, right? Right. And in every game, you go to, like, a new town, and that town becomes part of the landscape of a larger universe. This is actually how, like, Forgotten Realms and Grey... Right, Hawk? I don't remember what the older one is called. But, um, like, a lot of those North material things are just, like, the 30-year campaign from Gary Gygax's group or whatever. Like, it's just all the stuff they did. 
Um, right. So yeah, I, I I did it with them. You know, I was role playing with them, and I've kind of continued to indulge in that particular setting. And so, Wound is a is a place, is an organization, not a place, in the in the setting. But a lot of the stuff that I do doesn't necessarily specifically involve that organization, but it's part of the of a larger whole. And um, that comic, you know, I was it was the things I'm interested in. So essentially, I commissioned it as a way to the types of things that I enjoy are not mainstream by any chance, but you know, by any stretch of the imagination. And so it's difficult to find pornography that fits the, you know, the, the confluence of dehumanization, misogyny, uh, furry, <laughs> you know, that's just, there's just a lot going on there. Um, so basically just out of necessity, I, I kind of created it from the standpoint that I wanted material to consume for myself. Uh, cause I can't, you know, I, I enjoyed all sorts of, uh, pornography or, you know, erotic, like, text or images or video or whatever. But, you know, there's a particular itch that you want to scratch when you're into something that's uh, a little bit mainstream, and it can be hard to find something that really uh, fulfills that desire. So I guess that would be sort of the long answer. And then the, the, the too long don't read version would be, I got into Vore, and then I got into dehumanizing porn, and then I role played a lot. And that led to the creation of this thing, and then the comic is just a way to turn money into pornography that I enjoy, which I cannot normally get off the shelf. You know, if I had normal fetishes and I could just get, like, I don't know, bondage porn or something, I wouldn't commission all this crap. Like, <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really just custom tailored to what I'm interested in. Which is funny, because I get a lot of compl- I mean, I, I don't specifically get them directed at me but i like reading the comments on the images and stuff and one of them is like it's always the same thing which i think is hilarious because it's like of course what what would you expect like that's the one thing that i'm interested in like it's always yeah it's always gonna have the same themes all right well i appreciate uh the very detailed answer i mean that's definitely you definitely answered my question i appreciate that um, so I guess we should just keep moving right along. I'll move on to the third question, which is, um, I'll probably have to think of a better way to phrase this because the question three that I, the way I wrote it down was, uh, you know, when did you first begin public work on this project? You know, like releasing character details, world details, the comics themselves, um, et cetera, things like that. Um, if there's anything, any different way that I can phrase that, then I, I, that's a fair question. I think I understand. Um, I mean, I have to go back and look at my Fur Affinity account, but I think the most public thing I ever did, actually, so I guess I would say the most, the first time I posted, like, truly transgressive art that I had commissioned was something that I got from Mama Bliss, and I can't remember the exact date, but it must have been, like, 2004, maybe 2005. And I was a little concerned that I would get a lot of blowback from it, but, um, you know, my friend circle doesn't mind. You know, I, I don't, I, it's not something that, like, comes up during casual conversation, and I don't send people that I know links or anything like that. But there's a general understanding that the things that I'm into are not, um, you know, appropriate for casual consumption. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say, I'd say somewhere around 2004. Uh, would be the first. Now that wasn't that wasn't actually that setting. It was something unrelated, but it was kind of the beginning of the because I hadn't come. You know that idea hadn't been created yet. All right. Well, um, I think we can probably skip over uh, question four because that's just the why of it, which is you know why you know pursue some or creating something like this, which you've answered in question two already. So. Sure. We can we can skip over question four. Uh, so moving to question five, um, have any artists declined to work on the project when they're approached? Like, have they declined uh, yeah, commissions? And- sure, I've had so I've had kind of kind of like three responses, right? I've had people that uh, well, maybe it's not three; it's probably more than that. So I've had people that don't respond to me. Totally fine, I get it. They're not, you know, they're 
and I, I don't know why they don't respond to me. It could be because I have some notoriety and they know who I am. It could be because they're busy. You know, it could be they don't get the note. Who knows? <clears throat> I've had people that are, uh, that have like actively blocked me. Like, I think, I don't want to call anybody's names out, so I won't, I won't give out any names, but, uh, and yeah, that's totally fine. That's their right. Uh, and then I've had, um, artists that are picky, not picky, picky is not a fair word. This is, uh, you know, that are, that have limitations. And my goal generally is to always understand where an artist is at, you know, what they're comfortable with and not try not to exceed that. And so that can make life a little difficult because I tend to write, um, you know, graph, like if you're commissioning art at some point you have to say like, Hey, are you okay with grinder porn? And that is kind of a weird place to get to because just the question alone can be upsetting. So that's not what you want to lead with out the gate, right? Like it's important to um, be cognizant of the limitations, not limitations, that's not even the right word, to be sensitive to the, the feelings of the person that you're talking to so that you're not, you know, they, when they open your email, they're not like, oh my fucking God, you know. So commissioning artists tends to be like a multi-stage process, depending on the type of art I want to commission from them. Um, I have had just about every different experience as far as like, I have found people that are just, their public profile is like completely normal. Like, and when I say completely normal, I mean like, you know, fairly vanilla pinup art. And they're just totally willing to draw whatever. And I've had people like, like, you know, the worst stuff that I get. And I've had people that are like, uh, uh, that already do that kind of thing publicly and they're comfortable, you know, just adding to that in their portfolio. Um, and that's, so yeah, I, I've had, I've definitely had artists that have turned me down because of the stuff that I commission. But honestly, it's like less than 5%. Maybe like in the three, or two and a half to three range percent of of artists that I've contacted. All right, and uh, this is going to lead to question six as well, um, which and the reason I asked this one, I'm just so you have some context on where this one's coming from, is that I've seen artists do this on Twitter um, sometimes when they you know refuse to work for somebody for whatever reason, right, wrong, or sideways, they'll take it very public afterwards. Um, and regardless of what the person did or said, it's just sort of a thing that they decide to do. So the question is, um, any of the artists that have essentially either just blocked you outright or have, you know, said no, um, have any of them gone later to publicly condemn you just because you had reached out to ask for a commission or you had, um, or has anything like that happened to you? No, I haven't had that experience. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't have a, a, the answer is no. Um, I think people are pretty... I, I don't know. I've, I haven't run into that yet, so it 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 it's probably possible it could have happened, and I don't know about it because generally, when you're blocked, you have no capacity to see the rest of whatever they're spouting. So uh, it totally could have happened, and I'm unaware. But from my knowledge, I haven't seen anything like that. And people do tend to link me to stuff if there's some uh, video or you know somebody mentioning me I'll get, I'll get links to the the article by people who know who i am that sort of thing all right and now that but it doesn't oh i'm so sorry that's right uh but i just want to say you know it doesn't public criticism doesn't really but <laughs> doesn't really bother me so i i just find it kind of i don't say funny funny is not the right word but it's just kind of interesting to see like what other people's reactions are you know i don't want anything to be like shoved in people's faces. And that's part of the reason I started a website was so that I could just post what I wanted and it wouldn't be an issue. Um, but inevitably, you know, people repost the stuff on sharing sites like E621 or Derpy Brewer. And uh, it's always kind of fascinating to me to see what the human experience is like for other people that go on those threads and, you know, post their... Uh, my, I, you know, some people are really into it. Some people are like, "This is, I, you know, I need eye bleach now," and there's just a real range of responses, which I find fascinating. 
All right. Well, that answers half of question. Uh, the next question I was going to ask, which was, <laughs> how do you feel about you know public criticism that your project or your, the art you commissioned and all of that happens to get? Um, but the other half of the question was, do you find that criticism, any kind of backlash, to be legitimate or illegitimate? Do you think it's coming from a place of it being on some level valid, or do you not find it valid in the slightest? Oh, uh, I think it's almost always a mistake to consider people's criticism of you to be invalid. I think it's it's you know you, I think people generally come from a place of authenticity when they say stuff, and um, you know I I enjoy the things I do and I'm 100 percent comfortable with them, but I don't think that people raising objections to the things that I'm into or the art that I commission is somehow unworthy of consideration. If that makes sense, I'm. I'm kind of a big fan of, if you have a position on a subject, so let's say that I think that the art that I commission should be, I should be able to commission it, right? Like, that's that's a stance, right? A value judgment. Um, right. I can agree I with think, that as a stance. <laughs> Fair enough. But I think that people should be able to criticize that. There should be a way to cast stones at it. If you have a stance and there's no way to, to critique it with legitimate criticism, then you've just, that's religion. You know, that's absolute truth and or fanaticism. And so if your question is, do I think that, that that criticism is valid? I would say that all criticism is valid. Do I agree with it? No, but I've never read anything where I thought that the person was disingenuous or somehow, you know, that, that they were just trying to get me or something. All right. Well, fair enough. Um, I only have essentially two more questions, and because um, for the most part, a lot of these questions you've been answering um, within you know the answers of other questions, which is actually very good, uh, very much expedites the process. So I do appreciate that. Um, the last, second to last question, actually, and um, I totally understand if you want to skip over this one uh, because this one, ugh, it's it's, but I, it's one of the ones that I kind you of can have just ask to ask me. You don't have to. You don't have to. I will not be offended. All right. I'm a very difficult person to offend. All right. Uh, the second to last question is, you know, are you worried about the idea of those who dislike uh, the art that you commission? You know, whatever their reasons, whether it's moral or whatever reasons, are you worried about them potentially publicly disclosing personal identifying information about you? I mean, from the standpoint that I enjoy the art that I do and I publish it online so other people can enjoy it, uh... I would prefer that people didn't publish, you know, personal, personally identifying information about it, about me or, you know, anyone I'm associated with. But um, it doesn't keep me up at night. All I'm right. very, I, 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 I am in a privileged position in the sense that, like, I, I, where I can get a job anyway. I can get a job like tomorrow or something if something happened to me. I'm just not that concerned. Okay, so uh, effectively, it's you would prefer if I if I can paraphrase, you would prefer it not happen, obviously, as most people would. But it, it's not something that you're sort of like worried about. Yeah, I mean, I thought about it. So, I, okay, I will say that I have given it a lot of thought. Like, I have, I have definitely, you know, even before I posted that first stuff, like back in like 2004, I thought about it then, and. Uh, you know, I think that there's some value in being transgressive and in doing something that is appalling and maybe being trying to be a good person at the same time to show that those two things don't necessarily have to be opposites. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think there's some risk to myself, some non-zero amount of risk, you know, be it psychological, physical, you know, I've had people online, I don't really take these things seriously, but, you know, I've read people online say things like, uh, white kittens should have their hands broken, which I always thought was funny, like, somehow that would stop me from commissioning art, like, I don't draw it, so I, I think that person was just confused, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've had eh, fairly graphic threats of violence posted in comments, and I, I mean, I think these people are just venting so it doesn't it doesn't bring me any concern i'm not like worried about it but you know i 
I still would prefer to just be able to do my thing, post it for people that enjoy it, and uh, that be it. But, you know, there's always some risk. There's no, you don't live without risk, right? That's, right. that's life. Yeah. So the last question is just, um, do you have any final thoughts before we close the interview? No, I mean, I, this is fun. I like this. Uh, I was kind of curious. I mean, you said you didn't want to debate or anything, but I mean, if you have anything that you wanted to, you don't have to treat me with kids gloves. If you have something that you want to talk about, um, personally or professionally or something like that, I'm totally open to, you know, uh, exploring whatever topics you're you're interested in well as much as i appreciate that um that isn't exactly the purpose of this particular you know interview for the most part um i was just interested in finding out a little bit more about you and a little bit more about you know the subject matter simply because you know i the first time i saw anything that 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 from you know all of the stuff that you'd commissioned was in that video and then seeing your responses on twitter it simply I was curious. It fascinated me. There was so much there to unpack, and I I just uh, wanted to you know have this interview, and hopefully this can get other people's questions answered as well. Um, I'm not. Sure. I, I I like I said, there was no real agenda here. It's mostly get a couple questions answered. People can take from that what they wish. At the end of the day, it's up to them, and just put that out there. Yeah. So I'm curious. Um... Oh, so I guess the other thing I would say is that I actually do commission a lot of art that it well. I wouldn't say a lot, but I do commission stuff that isn't quite as intense. Um, the comic is kind of on the, you know, if the, you have a scale of zero being like very vanilla and 10 being like the most extreme thing, the comic is probably like in the 8.5 to 9 range. But I do commission stuff that's a little bit lower on the scale. Um, it is infrequent, though. So <laughs> I would not go looking for white kitten art if that's... If if you're looking for, you know, something more tame. All right, um, well, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, but, uh, and I again, this is clarifying for anyone watching in the future. Um, there was about, we're about 32 minutes in right now. The past 10 minutes uh, were have been kind of removed. And the reason why, and we're both, I'm making this clear that we're both aware that that happened. And the reason why is because yeah. the conversation turned more, uh, on a conversation toward about me as opposed to an interview, so it's um, it, it's one of those things that I didn't want to put. That... I interviewed him. Yes, turned it's... it around. Yeah, he flipped it. He flipped it for real. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you coming on here, and um, you know, I'll I'll keep you at it in case you feel like you want to have some kind of recorded conversation in the future, um, like ab about the things you were asking in the past ten minutes. I'm fine with that. It's just right now, I don't think is quite the time for it. Sure. All right. All right, man. Have a nice one. Now that the interview segment has officially concluded, I'm going to state outright that if anyone wishes to use this interview for any reason, whether they're creating content, whether they need it as a resource, whatever that happens to be, I am perfectly all right with you sampling this interview and using it for whatever purposes you need. You don't need my permission for that. It would be well within fair use, but even if you needed that, this clip right here should be enough to verify that I have no problems with you using any clips from this video. As previously stated, my input is not going to be provided for what you've just heard in that interview. Uh, that's not the purpose of this video. It was solely to ask questions, and my curiosity was sated by the end of this. At the end of the day, the purpose of this is to keep the information accessible and to keep it alive. And now it is archived on this channel for anyone to freely listen to, and share as much as they wish. For those of you who've still made it this far into the video, I thank you for listening, and you have yourself a wonderful morning, noon, or night.